Uh, Sean, definitely the 4 by one relay. Akani and then Son Mashengwani. Of course, Wade, I hope, I hope Wade will run a 4 by one um, I know they were also going to select him for the 4 by 4 And then Geith and Clarence, that's a five guys. Manfred definitely uh, is got a high, high possibility to, to be on the podium. Individual events, um, if you look at the rankings, uh, definitely Arcani Sembine for the 100. Um, other events to make finals, um, yeah, Manfred, maybe help me on this one. Finals, I don't want to oversell it, um, but those two, Arcani in the 4x1, really, and of course, individual event, Wade, don't, uh, he ran a 44-7 now in Madrid, and also at a 44-4, where was it? two days ago. So he's definitely shown he is recovered from his injury. He, he will be in shape. He's also run, he will also run two or three days before before Tokyo. So don't forget him. He's got, he's got the experience. Um, so I think definitely wait on Akani then. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting one because it's, I mean, you start looking at medal prospects for the Olympics in general and you start going, oops, and you compare it to Rio and you compare it to London and you really go, oops. And the biggest challenge we had, in particular in athletics, is that, remember, Wade and, and Casa Semenya came back with more than half of the medal tally that we won in, in track and field. Mm. Wade is, is a question mark because he, we just don't know what, he, what he's going to do. He is racing himself back into shape. He is a hard racer. He is, he's, a, he's a big match temperament. He's a huge contender. So he has to be one of the athletes that you're looking, you're looking out for. There is no Casta. Uh, which was which was a medal where you could say I'm betting my house on it. She's coming back with gold. You knew you, that was a safe bet. You just knew it. We don't have those. Um, I mean, Akani showed great form before he left South Africa, but he's he, he's he still needs to get that shape back that he showed back here. Now you're looking at the Americans who are running nine eight. Um, that's insane. Um, I mean, the the Americans potentially. Yeah, and the 100 and in the 200, they are in absolutely great shape. So it's, you know, Akani's going to have to work. He's going to have to get down to the 9.8s to be able to, to be on that podium. Um, you mentioned Sean uh, Patuchetsu uh, Masrangani. Now, there's a talent for the future, and he'll be hopefully part of the relay. He's got big MT. I mean, he's in the States right now. He's being coached by Leroy Burrell and Carl Lewis. Um, and she's. <laughs> What, you know, what a combo to be coached by. That, that's phenomenal. And he's buying into that whole hype of, of, of the USA. He's so happy there. And he, the winning mind. When he, eh? The winning mind. That's it. Um, yeah. I mean, you saw him at the, this, at the, just before shutdown, lockdown last year at the, um, at the, the Gauteng North Championships. I mean, he just blitzed them. Um, he, he, you know, he's a huge talent. But uh, and the four by one meter relay. So we are we are scratching here for medals. I mean, Tatiana Skumaka in, in, in the swimming. Um, Chad, will he do it? Chad Leclerc, you know, he's he, his peak was possibly London in 2012. Now we're going what eight nine years later. Um, the rugby sevens, yeah. um, and now we start looking. You know, where are the medals going to come from? So it's it's going to be tough for South Africa in, in, in Tokyo. Make no mistake. Sydney McLaughlin, as you say, the record on the 400 hurdles, um, and and Alison Felix going going to for her fifth Olympics. But um, I forgot to mention in, in the moment, you know, in the moment uh, side uh, South Africa with, with Kada and 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 the vet Kada Stan and the vet uh, Van Sel, Aljo's wife. Um, you know the kind of shape that they're in. Um, I I saw a, a train a time trial that the vet ran the other day at altitude. When she ran 32 and a half, I think. I was on a bike, Manfred. I was on a bike. It, Did you it, keep up? <laughs> actually, she spoke to me. She, had running, she was running 315. She spoke to me about the morning jog. I said, Flip, you're moving now. And it was cold. Actually, uh, yeah, she's in a good shape. But I don't want to put additional pressure on her. But yeah. uh, I can tell you she's in a good shape. She, she did a long run on Sunday. No, Sunday, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. A 40 case and it looked good. It was comfortable and it was, yeah. So that's, that's all I'm going to say. Well, she ran that 40 K and I think it was two hours and 30 or something like that. That's a 240 marathon. Um, and remember that she won Soweto marathon and okay, and it's a really brutal course, but she won Soweto in a 233 and that was in 2018. I think it was. 
Yeah. Um, but between between Gerda and Yvette, the shape they're in, um, there's a, not necessarily yeah. a podium, but a top 10, you know, and that would be phenomenal. I mean, we've never ever in the history of South African Olympics had two female marathon runners at the Olympics. No, I stand corrected. We did have the other year. Um, yeah. but, but these believe, two are believe, in the yeah. shape. Yeah. The, the, the women's sprint, sorry, Alton, on the women's sprint, it's going to be a battle between Jamaica and America. Um, and they're going to shut out the rest of the world. I mean, Don't just forget the about Nigeria, Masri. Nigeria, that young lady from Nigeria did what's it? And uh, also, Blessing, Blessing, Blessing uh, Gobare in uh, 1064 at the uh, Nigerian champs. Uh, look at, look at, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. So, Sean, I can tell you, I, uh, I already told my head of department uh, from the 24th of July until 7 August, don't look for me. I'm going to put in leave. I'm going to be glued to the TV. Yeah. No, I mean, it is going to be fascinating. I mean, just look at the, now we're going to the area that I love, which is the middle distances. You know, towards the end of last year, beginning of this year, you were going, ah, Joshua Chep, the guy is winning the 10,000. Now you look at Jeffrey Camaro who ran 27.01 in Nairobi, which is 1,700, no, one, yeah, one, no, 1,950 meters above sea level. He runs 27.01. Um, Joshua Chapter guy got beaten the other day. You've got Jacob Kiplimo. You've got the, the Ethiopians. Come. So the five and the 10,000, the men, is going to be phenomenal. The, the, the women, five and 10, and the 3,000 steeplechase is, yeah, we ju I mean, we've just seen records tumble. So um, it, yeah, it, I, I, I can't wait for the Olympics, to be honest. It's, it's going to be something special. That um, um, Inge Britson is not going to do the 5,000. Um, he's actually just going to do the 1,500, um, unless that's changed. But after his, his incredible 5,000 in, in Europe the other day, um, he said, no, he's only, he's only doing the 1,500. Um, because that would be a humding of, of, a, of a battle for sure. About Manfred, there's also an American guy. He's going for the long jump and high jump. Uh, he's going for yes. double. How, how cool is that? I've never seen that before. No, it's the first. No, no, 1912. There was, there was somebody in 1912. But this is the I'm, second. I'm too young for that, LJ. I wouldn't remember yeah. that. Yeah, I was three years old then. <laughs> but that's also impressive, especially, this, especially the field events, Manfred. That's, that's also something to look out for. Yeah, the, the guy you're referring to in, in the sprints is, is I, I forget his first name, is, is, is Knightley. Um, we broke uh, Usain Bolt's under-18 under world record and then went and, and uh, you know, broke the under-20 world record too. And he's not yet 20. Um, and in the end, look, I mean, he, he destroyed, no, well, destroyed no Lyles in the semifinals, but came the final and the 200 Lyles was, mm. ran the mm. fastest time of the year. Um, he made a statement. Um, he, he said um, when he didn't qualify in the 100 meters, he says the, the 200 meters is going to get ugly. It's going to get disgusting. And it did. <laughs> um, again, in, in, the, in the 200 meter sprints, just look out for the Americans. They're going to be dominating. And that hasn't happened for a long time. Um, we've, we've appointed a relay coach, Paul Goddess. He's uh, employed by uh, Athletic South Africa or uh, Saskalk and also by the university to coach the 4x1 or 4x4 relay team. And I think they've got a good system in place. Um, and they, one of the middle prospects for Tokyo. And I think um, track since Simon and then Akani, it's just, it's just a, a build-up. Um, years ago, it was the final hurdles was just this just a, a final, all of them can go sub-50. And now the sprints, the shorter distance, are really on fire. And I think it, it all started uh, when Simon and then Akani and then Enrico Brankis and then all the guys, Gift, Clarence, they all come to the point and it's, it's positive competition. So um, I know there's plenty of way, I can, there's a few names, uh, there's more names. But I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good rhythm and good competition to be uh, beyond the guys. Sean, the interesting thing is you go back and you're talking about the, the middle and the long distance heyday, which was obviously the 80s and, and you know, the, the early to mid 90s um, and how that's tapered off. So there's a number of reasons why, why um, 
the sprints in particular are doing so well. LJ is 100% correct. Uh, uh, Simon Machak were running 998 on tux and Akani running 1002. And you ask Akani about that race, he, he'll be going, why didn't I break 10 seconds? He was like, but that spurred him on. And that started a whole generation of, of sprinters coming through. Um, but you also see that things go in ebbs and flows. Like LJ was saying in his era, the 400 hurdles in South Africa, you had five, six guys running sub 50. Um, and running sub 50 back, back at, at that time, you know, that's, that's beyond world class. Now, if you're not running 48s, so you're not going to be going anywhere. In fact, if you're not running sub 48, you're not going to be going anywhere. I mean, just look at, at what's going to be happening tonight in Oslo. And then, of course, um, a couple of days later in Monaco. Um, but it does, it does go in circles and roundabouts in, 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 in the sporting code. Um, but yes, where's the history Clutus? She, she was a two-time Olympic silver medalist, a two-time world champion, Jacques Freitag. A world, uh, a world champion in the high jump, a world junior champion in the high jump. What has happened? Where's the, you know, where's the next generation? And part of that problem is yeah. because, because of how South African athletics, the sport, is, is being covered and being presented. So first of all, being presented from, from the federation in the provinces and, and the clubs. And of course, how it's being covered in, in the media, whether it's TV, radio, or, or, or on the print side. Um, and if you go and look at, at the broadcast now of, and you see it internationally too, and it, and it really irks me because I'm a middle distance fan, um, but you'll have a really good 5,000 meter race. What happens? We see the first two laps, then nothing, and then we see the last two laps. Wow. How do you build the generation there? Take, take a vet, uh, LJ's, LJ's wife. When she was coming through, she was running 1,500 meters, and they showed the whole race. That was fantastic. Then she goes and runs 5,000. And I, so, so how do you create, how do you create an excitement amongst the kids? Um, because they literally just see four laps of a race or might even just see a sprint finish and they go like, well, what happened? Um, and if you look at what's happening in the middle distances now, and that's part of going back to, to COVID and the fact that the, the athletes are rested, but they're also extremely hungry. They have not had the opportunity to race, which is why precious Michelle, I mean, he was training to, to qualify for the marathon. And he couldn't go to, the, to, to Europe to run in Hamburg, um, which is where Yvette was originally going to run, and she ran in Siena, because of lockdown restrictions. So what did he do? He went onto the track, because Alana Mayer down in Cape Town uh, with uh, Stellenbosch, with EnduroCat, was putting on events. Uh, Cases in Athletics were putting on events down in Kozul and Natal. And the racing was fantastic. And now we've got a vibe again. And now the athletes are performing. And now the athletes are talking. And now the, because of social media, uh, uh, the message is getting out there. Now you can generate and grow and you can help you know, build the sport. So it's the entire package. It's like, how do, how do we package the sport? How do we present the sport to sponsors? How do we present the sport to the media? How do we present the sport to the athletes? That's, that's a yes and no. Um, through no fault of their own, Comrades has become the be-all and end-all of athletics in South Africa because of the amount of TV time they get and so on and so forth. Um, look at Gerda Stan. She's a household name and everyone loves her because she won Comrades. She's broken records. Now she's gone and broken the marathon record, um, which incidentally got a lot less coverage back home than her running sub six on the Comrades. So, so yes, you, you are right to a degree. Um, but your precious Michelle is and, and Stephen Mokokas and so on, those guys are sticking to track and they're sticking to, to you know, the shorter distances in the road. Um, you are right, it's about opportunity. Um, you do need, and that's why I said that Athletic South Africa missed the, missed the trick during COVID to reignite elite racing, particularly on the shorter distances during this, this time, because you don't need 5,000 people. You know, elite racing is about 250 people max and you can make it exciting and you can make it interesting. And if you put on those events and you give them enough prize money, which again goes back to my point earlier, it's like if you put on quality events with good prize money, you don't have to run week in and week out. So, so you have got a point, LJ. Um, but I think we need to be careful that we can't turn around and blame comrades into oceans and so on um, because it's, it's not – the situation is not through their, you know, through, through, through what they've been doing. They've literally just been putting on the race. 
race day is shown in 2002. Um, if you ask me quickly, the whole culture is, is bold athletics. Uh, I was fortunate I won the World Juniors 2002 and this the whole, actually before I entered the, the, the people in the state already knew South Africa and, and, and World Juniors and I think their culture is just cricket, athletics, they love it and um, I think that's, they've got good coaches, obvious, they have a good system in place, um, most of them, most, but some of the athletes study in the US, so they get that advantage as well and then they go back. So I think they've got a good system, and then um, and they like they like to win. Yeah, our, our um, uh, Geraldine Pillay, the, that um, who used to be our, our best hundred meter exponent, I mean, she went to Jamaica a few years ago, and and when she came back, she told me that the if you go to a schools meet, like a schools championship, yeah, yeah. it's over three it's over three days, and you got like. 10 heats in the 100 meters. It's, it's something absolutely ridiculous. There, there is this huge passion for the sport. And, and as LJ said, they just, like, they just want to perform. It's like Kenya for sprints. Exactly. <laughs> and I just, I just think that the Americans have this incredibly, incredibly huge population um, you know, that they can draw on. Um, it, it, makes right. a big, it does make a massive difference. And also the NCAA system, I fit. Yeah. And, and, and we, the high-level and we competition. Do, of, yeah. Exactly. And then we, I mean, we just saw what, what, what's come out now in the trials, um, just how, you know, how strong the, uh, um, the Americans actually are in athletics. So um, I, think the, I, think it's a, I think it's a numbers game because of the massive population. And then again, it's the systems and the infrastructure that's in place that we're lacking here. I mean, so we come back to development of young athletes, the systems aren't in place.